Atheist Nomads episode 89, Barroom Atheist with Bill and Susie Robbins. Atheist Nomads is proudly brought to you by Archway Hosting. Check out their low-price, full-featured hosting solutions at archwayhosting.com. That's A-R-C-H-W-A-Y hosting.com. We are the Atheist Nomads, bringing you history, science, politics, religion, and interviews with leaders in the atheist community. Not all those who wander are lost. Welcome to another episode of Atheist Nomads. This is episode number 89. I am Dustin. Joining me as always is Wesley. Howdy ho, neighbor. And joining us today are Bill and Susie Robbins from Barroom Atheists. Hey, guys. Greetings. Yay. And in case you can't tell, the first one was Susie and the second one was, was Bill. Sometimes. We like to switch it up now and again. Yeah, we, we just throw our voices around. Yeah, well, that's good. You know, bringing that stuff out of the bedroom. That's good. That's good. Dr. Ray told us last weekend that, you know, you should. You shouldn't be tied into those roles. There's not a difference. Yeah. yeah so sometimes I go with Susie. It's okay. Yeah. Wait, should be tied into those roles. Uh, this is Daryl Ray you're talking about, right? I yeah, like he said you should not be tied into gender, gender roles. Yeah. Oh, okay. Because uh, I, I, from what I understand, he likes tying you into other roles. Oh, he likes tying everybody into lots of things, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, we don't have first hand on that. Questions <laughs> <laughs> about how that guy's doing these days in that area. I was asking what? Bill. Bill said, I don't want to know that crap. Yeah, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, we know he masturbates because he tells everybody. Because he that. tells everybody all the time. Yeah. But Furiously. I really don't want to think about that either. Yeah. <laughs> and, and for those of you who, who missed Daryl Ray, he was way back in one of our early episodes back in like the teens or 20s and has a, a podcast of his own, uh, Secular Sexuality. Yeah. We just heard about that. I did. <laughs> I didn't know it was around before. I might have to listen. No, I don't listen to podcasts. Who am I kidding? <laughs> oh, you just oh, you know, host oh, one. Only you guys. Wait, wait. Let me clarify. Aww. I listen to Atheist Nomads all the time. Ow. I'm just going to let that, that one hang, hang there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you realize hey. doing that with silences, I, I get rid of all of those, right? Pregnant Sweet. pause. Pregnant pause. <laughs> yeah, you have to actually say something for the silence. So we're going to do it without the say Sora, is what you're saying. What's a say Sora? <laughs> It's a pause for dramatic effect like that. <laughs> it looks funnier when you can see it. <laughs> I'm amazed. I'm, I'm just imagining that your face just kind of froze too. I did. I totally did. Awesome. <laughs> and you guys can't see me, so that was really useless. <laughs> I liked it. It's like when I when I record the podcast and I do air quotes. Also useless. Fucking audio. <laughs> oh, can I say that? Yeah. I didn't ask you. Oh, good for good video. Not I tend to audio. point a lot too. Uh, we encourage you know, all of the cussing. Oh, good. Feels so much better now. Yeah, we're not like fucking Noah or Heath and, and them fuckers. Yeah, we, we encourage cussing on our show. I know. They're so clean these days. I know. <laughs> they got they get themselves a red, red, white, and blue rodent, and all of a sudden there's no more, not enough cussing on their show. <laughs> <laughs> I think What's with up that, with that? That one they're trying to appeal to a larger audience. Yeah. yeah, it seems to be working it, for them. Looks like Mickey Mouse on acid. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I'm kind of. I finally saw it on Twitter a couple of days ago. Looks rather cute. Uh, I have not listened to a podcast in about two months since I wiped my phone clean. I haven't installed a like, single <laughs> podcast on my phone. It's kind of weird. Wow. I used to have twelve or thirteen. When I'm busy at work, I listen to a lot of podcasts. Yeah, and uh, actually just subscribed to two today, and Barroom Atheist was one of them. Just today, yeah. Oh, yeah. he's behind the power curve. It's we okay. haven't put one out in about a month, so there you go. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you're really not behind on ours. <laughs> <laughs> no, we had our granddaughter was born almost a month ago. Nice, congratulations. Yeah, we've been hanging out with her because she's cool. Yeah, and we, we haven't been. She just takes so much time. You gotta, you gotta pick her up, and you gotta hold her, and you gotta coo, and you gotta hang out, and it just takes away from podcasting and you uh, just sit and stare at her yeah you know she is the best it's like better than netflix oh wait an eyebrow moved i saw it i saw it and, and then you 
You go tell each other that. <laughs> like you'll run to another room. Hey, I saw her eyebrow. I'm like, really? And then the other one will come <laughs> and like check this out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So basically, we've become idiots. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> really. We're, we, yeah. Bigger idiots than we were before. <laughs> the one thing you guys can be proud of, at least, is that you are, are now officially evolutionarily successful. Uh-huh. You have not only reproduced, but produced productive offspring. True. There you go. Oh, yeah. Them jeans are going a long way. She looks just like Bill, too. That's poor right. The, the baby or, or your daughter? Poor, poor child. The baby. Really pale and wrinkled? <laughs> and, that, too. And she's the, the boy's child, not, not, mm. not the girl. Sorry, my, my apologies. That's oh, all right. Okay. You, you had a 50-50 shot. We didn't tell you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you would have got it right if I would have kept my mouth shut, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what? I bet they don't really don't care. No, nope. because I wouldn't. <laughs> I mean, I just would. not Well, <clears throat> to go along with all of this baby making stuff, um, I'm actually getting clipped here pretty soon. So hooray! <laughs> wow, that was like the smartest thing Bill ever did. Not a bad choice. Nice, not a bad choice. I did it 20 years ago. Never looked oh. back. So. What's what's your guy's story aside from surgical procedures? Well, how far back do you want to go in our story? We well, originally it was a spur. <laughs> <laughs> okay, not quite that far back. Uh, were, were, were you guys uh, raised religious? Uh, Bill, let's start with you. I was sort of raised religious, but not consistently. Mm. I was raised Catholic, but then mom and dad got divorced, and mom didn't want to pay the the hush money to the church. I don't know how much sure. you know about Catholicism, but you got to pay the church off to annul your marriage. Mm-hmm. She to do that, married stepdad one, so we went the whole Protestant route for a while. A couple of different ones. Oh, First she pulled a, a Henry VIII. Yeah, exactly. Nice. Which, except she didn't cut my dad's head off. <laughs> that that would have been uncool. Well, but, yeah, yeah. So she did that, and stepdad number one, first a little Methodist for like a week. And then, like, non-denominational Church of Christ batshit crazy stuff for a couple of years. Then, mom divorces stepdad one. Back, moving my grandparents. Then I'm back in a Catholic church again. I think <laughs> that really helped my skepticism, though, to hear the different points of view at different times in my life and going, this can't all be true. It can't all be right. I think that was one of the things that started me early into yeah okay i'll go along with it but i don't b- really believe it or about I sure how old all of it about how old were you when that was coming to your mind um i had serious doubts in my teens mm-hmm. um played along with it to make everybody else happy uh joined the military then it wasn't so big a factor for 20 years you know uh, what branch air force nice that was Ooh. my choice Full career. That's my choice too. Yeah, and then I retired, and then I got vocal. Uh-oh. That was probably probably a mistake. I don't know at the time because the wife here, who we're, who we're gonna we're gonna segue over. That was beautiful. The wife was here, beautiful, was um a real believer, and mm. I wasn't. She kind of knew I wasn't. She didn't drag me to any churches or nothing. But she did her little praying thing, and I, I left her alone. I didn't know he was an atheist, though. Holy crap. I was just thinking to myself, if I would have known, I probably wouldn't have married him. Probably not. That's a very bad word. So, so yeah. Bill, how early were you an atheist in that whole process? Man, I didn't use the word till probably uh, four years ago. Wow. Uh, when, when was I actually an atheist? Yeah, when would that word have applied accurately? On and off at different times in my life, I suppose it may have applied. The last thing I can remember was when my first marriage was going to hell. I really tried to get back to my religion. I mean, I really, really tried. Um, Like I said, I was baptized Catholic, raised Catholic. And I thought, maybe there's something here that I missed. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, Everybody else gets this. What did I miss? So I went back and I read the catechism. and. I um, read the Bible, and I watched that fat nun lady, what was her name, Cinder, Sister Angelica, she had a little show, watched that shit, I tried to learn as much as I could about it, about my original religion at least, and 
after a couple of months of that, just trying to figure out what everybody else saw, I just said, okay, this is bullshit. I'm moving on. And that would have been the late 90s. And you made it through both the Catechism and Bible first. Yeah. Wow. Now, I can't remember that much. I mean, it's been, since I read it, probably 15 years. So that was probably yep. the, the version of the Catechism before the one I read uh, in my, my Catholicism class that I took in, in grad school. <laughs> Not a good read. No, no. <laughs> the, the new one that, that uh, Benedict wrote is really not either. The characters are shallow, one-dimensional. The plot line's all over the place. Wow. I've never been <laughs> subject to that one. I'm so. joking. It's not a story, honey. It's like it's almost like a law book. It's That's what it feels like reading. It would be better if it was a story. Why would you do that? I don't because know. I wanted to know. I wanted uh, to. I yeah, wanted to okay. find what Forget, everybody was looking. for. I didn't ask that question because I had never read the Bible until I became an atheist. Either so, <laughs> yeah. And, and I was looking for some. I was looking to figure. I had a lot going on in my life. I was looking to figure things out. And that was going to help you. I, I didn't think it would, but other people thought it would. And I was kind of at a point in my life where I knew I didn't know shit. So I thought, you know what? Let me check this out, mate. I look. I was actually looking at it with a skeptic's eye. You know what I mean? Maybe mm. I missed something here. I don't even have one of those. So I looked again. And yeah, I don't know that I, I read the whole thing like cover to cover, but I read most of it. Poor guy. Um, yeah, it was terrible. And was I don't remember what the nun's name was. She had a TV show. I watched her stuff too. I mean, it the really. The flying nun, the Sally Field lady? No, it wasn't. <laughs> really? She was cute. <laughs> wasn't Kidget. Sally Field. Kidget. <laughs> <laughs> and there was no black trans Ann involved either, nor was there an elephant. But no, I don't remember. But anyway, I, I just went really into it just to find out. And that is the last time I can remember really seriously. After that, I threw it away. I just said, you know what? I don't think there's really anything to this. But then I kind of just became an apathist. What's an apathist? I didn't believe and I didn't give a shit. Oh. I really didn't care. You know, it was just not a factor for me. Yeah. That didn't change till after I retired. Hmm. I was really apathetic myself, but um, it's dumb to say it, but it, true for Dawkins and a few others, uh, 9-11 changed my mind a lot. Got me all patriotic for a couple of years, and then you know, I was still an atheist then, but man, that, that really kind of shifted my focus. I was so busy after 9-11. I really didn't have time to think about anything, but okay, when am I deploying again? Hmm. You know, when am I coming home again? I was still under the assumption that God saved the rest of those people. You the know. One. Were you? Yeah. yeah. There's ones that, everyone that didn't die. You know, he does miracles like that all the time. Wow. It's really strange to think I was ever like that. <laughs> <laughs> Wait. You thought he saved everybody that just didn't die. Right. It's not that. You know, what was it? 3,000 some people died, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, and, and we, we pray for them and, you know, they're, they're, it's very sad that they died, but look at all the people that didn't. It <laughs> wow. could have been much worse. Wow. Yeah. Mm. Talk, talk, talk about counting the hits and ignoring the misses. That's, that, that, that's exactly. like that, you know, whenever a, a, a giant airplane falls out of the sky and everybody dies except for one person and like, and you then know, you thank oh. God for that one person. Yeah, yeah, and just kind of say fuck the rest of them. Now, at least the bullshit I was hearing at that time was that normally there would have been 50,000 people working in there, and there just weren't that many at work that day, so only 3,000 died, and the airplane seats 350, but it only had like 130 people, and the part of the Pentagon they hit was pretty empty, and that was, that was all God doing all of that, making people late to work and missing their flights and yeah, hurting airline sales and... You know, if he could have done, could he have made everybody miss the damn flight? Or wait, I got one. How about you make the metal detector go off in security and make the <laughs> the fucking crazies miss the flight? Yeah, yeah all together. Mm -hmm. That yeah. would have been awesome. But no. <laughs> or just make the terrorists late. Right. That's what I mean. Yeah. Or or, or make it so the plane doesn't start on the way to the airport. No. Yeah. yeah. You know, one of them like drinks expired God's not milk. Dead. And when he made the drinks. car not start forever. Right. Yeah, he couldn't make the plane not start. What a dick. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, yeah, after I retired, I decided, you know what? I, I was 
I was actually being a dick by not speaking out. So I decided I needed to stand up and be counted. Damn him. I was reading a lot of stories, a lot of things that were going on. And I read about Jessica Alquist hmm. and her defense of and, and her reasoning behind it. I read her essay, her reasoning behind why she took a stand. And actually, that kind of moved me because she was appealing to the, the history of religious freedom in this country and what it means and what it meant to the founder of her state and in our Constitution. And that's why she was making a stand, not because she didn't like religious banners. And I said, you know, here's this kid, you know, doing this. And here I am, retired military person, almost at the time I was almost 40. And I'm like, and I'm saying nothing. Now I need to stand up and be counted. So big mouth, crazy guy. Yep. And then I went to the, <laughs> so, I, so I went to the, I went to the reason rally. Yeah. Mm. That's, that's when I started using the word. Yep. That's when he started using the word. With and I put 20, my thousand other atheists in the rain. Yeah, and I started. I put my last name on my Twitter account. Whom of which I thought were all crazy. You did. <laughs> I was there. All, every one of them. That was one of the crazies in the rain. I was at home telling all, uh, telling, calling Bill's mom on the phone and going, he went to that atheist thing. <laughs> yeah, oh. that was. I remember that day. Yeah, you you pulled a wonder bitch that day. I told everyone. <laughs> Like, I can't believe he went down there and how dare he. And I, that was, yeah, I had to turn my cell phone off because it was really? just ringing from all these people wanted to talk to me about it. And I'm like, you know, I live up there. I can talk to all you people any day of the week and you've never bothered till now. Now I'm down here to experience this because I kind of leave me I the fuck alone. Kind of outed him to, like, to the world. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. You know, all that stuff they say about safely coming out. I blew it all for him. So. Nice. Good but it was job. cool because I, I was coming back from the Reason Rally, so I was all charged up to do it anyway. Yeah. Well, as you said, you went. Was that that was that was motivation? Oh yes, that oh, was. I, I wish I would have. No, Dustin did. Oh, that. Dustin. I'm sorry. Yeah, it, it was amazing. I'm waiting till Reason Rally two. Yep. I'll be at that one. Damn bells on! Damn it. I'll <laughs> join you for that. Actually, everybody needs to be at that one. So all your listeners who are listening now, you need to be at Reason Rally two next March. Yep, because Bill and Susie will buy you each of you a drink. Right, and don't have crazy thoughts like Bill did about walking there. <laughs> <laughs> what? I got a text from Bill this morning, and he said, hey, I got a crazy idea. And I'm like, oh, yeah, what? And he goes, why don't we take a week off and walk to the Reason Rally? I think that'd be badass. Jesus Christ, we live in Philadelphia. It's 100 miles. Yeah. Well, I said take a week, so I'm thinking, you know, walk. We could... Pub crawl there. Yeah, okay. <laughs> That's just crazy talk. We Or we could bicycle, but I think, you know, you still get a DUI on a bicycle. But mm -hmm. you could definitely bike it as long as you had a chaser vehicle. Yeah. That's doable. I don't like bicycles. <laughs> <laughs> you guys could get to, like, super marathon skill and, and run. No, yes. I'm thinking about drinking through it. Uh, yeah. Uh, get to being a super hash house harrier. Uh, yeah, I used to be one of those. A super one, actually. <laughs> I, too, was a Hash House hair. Yep. Yes. I, I'm in the songbook. I'm in the songbook in a couple of places. I'm in the songbook in a couple of places. Nice. Yeah, yeah I went so. twice when I lived in Tacoma, and after a uh, very shiggy run that went 13 miles, about half of it through blackberries, <laughs> and <laughs> then drinking the kind of gallons of beer. Those were the kind of trails I used to lay. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh. Because even then I wasn't very fast. So if I could. So he needed everything he could. I needed all the obstacles I could get my hands on. <laughs> Especially from those assholes who could just like run forever. Yeah. We didn't even use the word run. Yeah. You couldn't use race. No race. Yeah. That was, that was a definite down down. I did drink out of my shoe once. Did you? Wow. Yeah. If Doesn't you everybody. Yeah, well, everybody who wears, everybody who's dumb enough to wear new shoes to a hash. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> you have to drink out of them. Yeah. I am totally, totally lost here. Well, let's just put it this way. Susie and I have been together on the drinking thing for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> the God thing, not so much, but drinking, we were, we've been on board since day one. Yep. So, so the bar thing room, to part of barroom atheist, that goes <laughs> way fucking back. <laughs> So, like, there was this sperm, see? <laughs> okay, so so anyway, moving along, uh, <laughs> you get back from the Reason Rally, and, and your wife has outed you to your entire world. 
Yeah. Yeah, I did. Shitty. And yep. yeah, <laughs> it was. <laughs> And some people were cool. Some people were absolutely not cool. Because, you know, I, I would feel bad that he kind of still doesn't talk to his mom. Yeah. But. but she was not cool. She's just not cool. <laughs> and she was not cool uh, on a couple other things. I don't want to say, I don't want to lay all this on that. Because it wasn't just the one, but this was definitely a factor. Yeah. Check this out. She thought that I was the reason Bill was an atheist. <laughs> How does that even make sense? It's always the <laughs> wife, you know, the good son, the good son. I guess. Yeah. So I eventually converted Susie to my way of thinking. Is so that, how'd that happen? Do it. Is that really uh, what I want to go with? <laughs> well, let, let's, let's, let Susie start from her beginnings. Yeah. Go ahead, Susie. Susie was a sperm. <laughs> no, I was an egg. <laughs> well, you and a sperm both. I, uh, I grew up <laughs> in Northern California. Uh oh. With um, southern parents in a Protestant home. What what part of Northern California? I actually lived in Arcata, which is about fifty miles south of Crescent City. Nope. Okay. If you can be, well, it's down to to Washington people, but it's up to everybody else. Yeah. <laughs> I, I grew up in Grants Pass. Yeah, and I lived with my mom, my dad, and my brother. And my parents took us to church every Sunday and every Sunday night and every Wednesday. And I was a, like, I can, I have all these terms now for what I used to be. I was a creationist, even though I didn't know there was any alternative to being a creationist. That's just all I knew. The fact that I was that that I can say that I was a Protestant is kind of funny because I went to Arcata Church of the Nazarene and honestly thought for most of my life that Nazarene was the only kind of religion there was. So, wow, that was was kind of interesting. Interesting. I was in my own little bubble, per se. Um, So my parents decided to do this super crazy thing when I'm like in sixth grade. And they moved down to Southern California. And uh, my mom kind of stopped going to church because she was going through some crap at the time. So things happened and she kind of stopped going to church. Well, I met this girl and she took me to a Baptist, a Baptist church. <laughs> by the way, I was baptized by sprinkling in the Nazarene church. Mm -hmm. But then when I started going to the Baptist church, they told me I was doing it wrong. Yep. So then I had to be baptized again at the Baptist church and they dunked me in water, which is totally a nightmare for me. It's just, if you knew my fear of water, you wouldn't even ask. So I was Baptist for a few years and then, um, I kind of took the wrong path as a teenager and my Baptist friend who was so religious told me that she couldn't be my friend anymore because I was a bad person. But you were the devil. I was the devil. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah true. I was a devil. That's a nice way of putting so, it. So, my parents divorced right around then, and nobody went to church, but I was still determined that I, I like, I learned that, I had learned now that there was Baptists, and I think I had heard something, I didn't really know what a Catholic was either, that was, I, I, I knew there were two now, I was feeling a little more schooled, and my, um, my parents didn't go to church at all. And I joined the Air Force and I was spiritual. Well, see, this is, I honestly believe you get spiritual before you go atheist. It's just, it's just the way it happens. I was a spiritual human being and I believed in God in my own way and I knew that God was helping me. And I went through Air Force basic training and had an awful time in basic training. And only by the grace of God did I get through basic training. Because I prayed every day, at night, and in the morning. And if I didn't have God with me, I wouldn't have gotten through basic at all. So, I met Bill when I was in the Air Force. We were both stationed in the same place. And then, like, later in life, Bill and I hooked up and, and started, like, dating, I guess. And we get together. And, you know, I, I kind of 
didn't ask whether he believed in God or not. It never came up because I knew what I believed, and therefore, this is the way it is. I just really didn't know a difference. So, uh, Susie, hmm. did, 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 it, did you just not care, or did it just never come up? Or I just didn't care. I was, I can say, this is kind of weird because you guys were talking about apathetic. Uh-huh. I was apathetic, but like in the other way. I knew there was a God and I just didn't care. Like nothing else mattered. It was just, mm. it was You kind of figured deal. everybody else was on the same page. Right. Unless they really went to church all the time. Right. Then they're just a little crazy about it. Right. Exactly. Everybody, <laughs> everybody was religious. There were just the, the outliers that went to church all the time. So. Then when um, Bill started having his enlightenment, I was just, it was, it, it was crazy. It was really crazy for a while. Uh, we had, I don't know if you, how many episodes of our podcast you've listened to, but on one of our episodes, I, I have a specific saying. We had to, I took him to the Reason Rally, and I was really pissed that he went to the Reason Rally. Yeah. And... I had decided that, you know, being the Star Wars listener, watcher that I am, that, that him and I needed to talk. So, you know, I didn't, I never really had anything to say before, but I took him to dinner and I sat him down. I said, you know, we need to talk. And he was like, okay, what's up? And I said, Bill, you're going down a path I can't follow. I said, like... <laughs> Like the Sith, yes. the evil Sith that he was. Well, yeah, of course. I said that um, him and I, you know, we're going to have to come to an understanding. So I told him that um, he could not believe whatever he... Actually, I think I even said he could believe whatever he wanted to believe. And I would believe what I wanted to believe. As long as he didn't kick my puppy, we'd be okay. Yeah, that was it. I no, don't kick my puppy speech. It was the don't kick my puppy speech. And it was, it was, I, I strictly agreed to not try to convince her that there was no God. Because before this, before this conversation, he had started really being loud about it and saying things that were insulting to, to, to me because he was insulting God. And, um, I guess I started like, he started listening to podcasts in the car. Or he had been for a while. And like Bill figures, you know, he's driving the car. I'm listening to what he wants to listen to. So I would sit through podcasts. I sat through many different podcasts. Well, just so everybody doesn't think I'm a dick, the reverse was also always true. <laughs> what do you mean? So when you're driving, I listen to what you oh, listen yeah, to. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that, that's the way it goes, too. I, 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 just, I just driving, hear women all over the country going, what a sexist dick. <laughs> whoever's driving has control. The driver, regardless of gender. Has control chooses. of the of what's playing in the speakers. So we would listen to podcasts. And he um he got this DVD in the mail. And um he sat, like, he had it and he hadn't really watched it. And I was, I'd been doing a lot of thinking ever since. See, it's like an evil seed that worked its way in, <laughs> you know, because it made me start thinking. It's and the path to the dark side. Thinking is dangerous for Christians <clears throat> when they actually have to engage their brain. Now, the first thought that came to me was if you'll go back to the story about basic training. And I was in basic training and only by the grace of God did I get through basic training because I prayed every day. And every night. And one day I was thinking about that and I went, you know, that's not right. Like God didn't get me through basic training. I got myself through basic training. I put in the work. I worked my ass off and I did it. And so, no, he's not getting credit for that one. And then I eventually stopped giving him credit for lots and lots of things. So I'm, I'm sitting in front of my TV. And Bill puts on the a movie, or I put on the movie, of the Reason Rally. And I'm watching it, and I'm typing away on my computer, and I'm typing away on my computer. And Bill's like, what are you doing? And I'm like, just typing away. So then I looked at him, and I was really upset. I, I vividly remember this day. It was the 12th of July in 2012. Woo -woo. I still remember the date. And he goes, what are you doing? And I said, I, I don't know if I want to push this this." 
enter button. You know, I don't want to push the send key. And he goes, why? And I said, because then I will be actually letting the world know that I don't believe in God. And I'm really afraid right now that I'm going to get struck by lightning or killed or somebody in my family is going to die and something like that's going to happen. But I did it anyway. And since since that day, I've just spent the last couple years just trying to learn everything I could and the abundance of knowledge that you get by just turning on your brain. It's crazy. I don't sound like a, I don't, I used to say I wanted to leave my head stuck in the sand. I didn't want it. I don't want to know any of that stuff. But now I'm like, these people are crazy that they don't want to know any of this stuff. They just want to ignore this. Like it doesn't happen. So, yep, that's me. That's my story. I totally understand where some people just want to ostrich everything and just stick their head in the sand. But yeah, I, I like to smack those people and you know say, that hey, wake, so wake up. Was. And, you know, you were saying that you were, you know, you took credit back away from God for helping get you through the Air Force Academy and all that. Yeah. But, you know, all you did was learn how to fold your shirts really nice and neat in the Air Force. So, you know, it couldn't have been too hard. Yeah, well. She had some trouble with the physical. I, um, when I was in basic training, I was, I don't really know. I mean, I, I was out of shape, but I don't really think that was it. I was kind of unmotivated to do anything in the physical fitness area. And, um, I got shin splints really bad and oh, stress fractures in my legs. And <sighs> most people spend six weeks in basic training. Uh-huh. I was there for three and a half months. Wow. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. So it was an ordeal. So it was kind of a, it was kind of a deal. I mean, it was, it was kind of a big issue for me. But, you know, when I, when I came out of it, when I thought about it, you were exactly right. Cause, you know, God can't fold t shirts. God can't run that mile and a half in 14 minutes and 30 seconds, which I was determined to do. But yeah. you did. All right. And I, so I did it and I was like, okay. So, but then it, at the time it was all, thank God, thank God for doing this for me. You know, if yeah. God wanted you across that finish line, he would have miracled your ass there. <laughs> <laughs> and that, that really fits with what we were talking about earlier with, you know, God saving the one person in the plane crash. Right. If God got you through basic training, you would have been done in six weeks. Right. Exactly. But I never saw it that way. Well, it's kind of, it's sad. It's sad when people do that. I, God I does feel... all the good stuff and none of the bad stuff. You don't know. It took me a long time to wrap my head because I was new to atheism. And it took me a long time to wrap my head around what was wrong with, because my family was personally affected by the, um, Oklahoma tornadoes. Yeah. And it took me a long time to wrap my head around the fact that People were saying, well, thank God that those people didn't die or thank God that they were safe. And I was like, yeah, you know, that that's really cool. Why, why, why is everybody all up in arms about it? And then it occurred to me that, you know, why aren't they blaming God for putting the tornado there, which tore up my mother's house and, you know, all my stepdad's belongings are yeah. toast, you know? And it's, it's just sad that people, they, they, they give all the credit. Right to this, yes, to this it imaginary make friend. any sense, and then take all the blame on themselves. Well, they have I mean, self-image. God takes all the credit, and then when something bad happens, uh, it's always oh, mysterious ways, or I didn't do the right thing, or the devil. You know, <laughs> I I was all about blaming the devil for everything. Then. I mean, I've heard people say they didn't pray hard enough, or they haven't been faithful enough, or and you're right. Sometimes it's just well, he has a plan. I think I'm just going to punch the next person that tries to pray for me. See, I, the I, devil, I feel, so David Silverman, Susie and I, Susie and I have, a, we're a little different. Than that. She gets very angry. I think it's because she feels like religion kind of trapped her for so long. I feel really sad for those people. I just want to hug them and say, you know what? God didn't do all that cool stuff. You did. You're really an awesome person. As awesome as you thought God was for doing all that shit. You you're are, that awesome. You did it. Yeah. But no, I want to punch people. Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm more on your side, Susie. See, I just I just don't understand. and it it might have a lot to do with my family. 
oh, my family is extremely religious. Mm -hmm. And they just won't give up. They won't leave me alone. They don't stop talking to me. Oh, they want to talk to me all the time because they're going to save me from myself. And I just don't want to hear it anymore. I'm just so done. Like on Easter. Yeah. My sister texted me on Easter because it's such a beautiful day. I know you don't understand, but I love you anyway, and I'll pray for you. I'm like, no, I'm an idiot. I don't understand. Right? Yeah, because we never heard of this Jesus Because we don't guy, know what right? happens on Easter. So my reply was, because I said, I told Bill I was going to write something nasty back to her. So Bill told me what to write. And I wrote, thanks for thinking of me. I'm having a great time at the American Atheist Convention in Memphis. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I wrote. That was my oh. suggestion. Yeah, that was. Yeah, because I would have said something much not nicer. <laughs> a, a, a little passive aggressive, but not bad. Well, yeah, but she was returning a passive aggressive. Yeah. That's you fair. don't understand it. Yeah. My yeah. family lives in that crap. Just because I don't believe what you believe doesn't mean I don't understand this shit. Yeah, guy raised from the... I, we got that. We, we've we all heard the story. Yeah. story doesn't make any it's sense, but we've heard the story. It's very condescending. And I've heard the, the William Lane Craig type apologist explaining why resurrection is the best explanation. And a fourth grader could take that shit apart. Not this fourth grader. Oh, it was the, actually, it was a lot of fun listening to his daughter take that shit apart. Oh, my. The the four women came up and the stone was rolled away. And there's no way the four, the, they could have rolled the stone away. Well, then why the fuck were they there? They were going to prepare the body. How'd they plan to get in? That's true. If they could not have moved the stone, they had no reason to be there. The story makes no sense. It's got I so many little so plot never holes. Thought of that. If it were a movie, it would be well. It would be God's Not Dead. That's how bad this fucking movie would be. Without the, without those awesome dudes from without MST3K. the MST three thousand MST three thousand guys. Yeah. So the glove don't fit. Oh no, it don't fit. But <laughs> dudes, the the riffing of God's Not Dead was the highlight of my weekend last. Did week. you guys yeah. brave that movie? No, uh, no. <laughs> okay, I'm yeah. telling don't. you I'm telling you right now, don't even try. Because okay, first we all know about the content and how it portrays atheists and it's it's awful. The content sucks. But it's not the content that makes it so unbearable. It's the atrocious dialogue and the production. It's just the worst movie ever. Ever. Oh, yeah. If I agreed with everything in that movie, like every sentiment You'd in the movie, hate it. I'd still hate it. Yeah. It still sucks. <laughs> but it was really funny when, when the guys from Mystery, what is that? Mystery Mr. Science Theater. Mystery Science 3 Theater 3000 did it because they were, they were talking over parts that I didn't have to listen to and it was hilarious. Nice. Yeah. That, but, that, yeah. that would have been fun. Yeah. Sorry you guys couldn't make it. So we, can we start? Listeners, we, we start with stuff like that if you like kicked us a few bucks. Just saying. <laughs> yeah, kick these guys a few bucks. <laughs> yeah. And, and you can listen means. to our show because we don't we do not have a Patreon account. And you oh. can donate to, to Dustin and Wesley. <laughs> yep. Athe- uh, Patreon.com slash atheist nomads. Because awesome. we don't we, we don't have one. It's just something we decided not to do. Yep. Uh, we we did too for about 65, 70 episodes. Then hopefully we'll get out episode fifty soon. But it's just, I don't know. This was my, this was something I wanted to do, something I wanted to do for the community. Felt like I had something to say. And I, and I really like to learn. I really see. I didn't plan again. The podcast was Bill's idea. And I was like, okay, fine. I'll go on there. Like, you know, why not? I'll, I'll do it. Um, I want to learn, Bill, so you can teach me. And he was telling me all these words I didn't understand. And I felt like an idiot the first few episodes. And then I got, to not feeling like such an idiot. Well, it was the convention that did it. Well, her story, she she said she was an atheist in June, July, July, July 2012. Yep. I took her, the first PA state convention ever was in September that year. Woo woo. I went to it. And they were selling tickets relatively reasonably because they didn't have a lot of speakers. I mean, it was just a startup kind of deal. Mm-hmm. The first one was. But I took her and I said, well, let's go. Let, let me take you where you can talk to other people who don't believe in God. But she was, was really having a weird. hard time with it. It was really weird. And oh, the PA non-believers, right? Yeah, Brian Fields. Yeah, and yeah I've yeah. heard of them. Yeah. And nice. 
well, now Brian's a friend, but I didn't know him then. I, we just showed up. We just went to Harrisburg. Yeah. For the first convention, showed up, got a room, and went listen to some actually speakers, listened to the speakers. Met people. Yeah, we did listen to a few. We speakers listened to a lot one. more speakers in that one than I have since. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they sell DVDs, whatever. But. <laughs> It was cool. And then we were in the bar afterwards, and I'm talking with a lot of other atheists. And you know how we get when we get together. You start talking the arguments and this, that, and the other, and, and morality then, and absolute morality. And, and her eyes just kind of glazed over. Yeah, it was it was hard. But I could tell she felt uncomfortable. Because he was stopping the conversation terms a lot. like Pascal's wager and, and this kind of. And I'm like, what the heck are you talking about? You know, so, I don't know what that is. And that was our initial concept. It was where does someone go when they figured out, I don't believe in God, but I don't know where to start asking questions. I don't know what all this stuff is. And I go to these atheist meetups and I, I they're speaking another language. And so you pull up a chair at the bar. Right. So you can, <laughs> you're talking about it with people. We sit around and talk about it over beers and and we we try to break it down. I use Star Trek totally analogies. So, <laughs> oh, and and the Bible thing because we read the Bible because I never read the Bible as a believer, and you will find the episodes where I figure things out in the Bible are hilarious. Like yeah. David's a dick. Yes. Mm -hmm. Like I. He also liked it. Huh? You know him. <laughs> John, you know him and Jonathan had a thing. <laughs> Come on. I never, I never thought when you're in Sunday school, they teach you all the good stuff. They don't teach you any, all the stuff that's, man, those books are harsh. Yeah. They don't teach you about buying wives for a bag of foreskins. Right. They, I didn't, yeah, that was gross. Where does that come from? And they bring don't me a bag of dicks. Anything. I'll give you my daughter. What? You know, <laughs> like David was a good guy and he killed Goliath and that was awesome. And that's all I knew. And then you learned the rest learned. of the story. It, it's yeah, the, but then you have the the um, the Catholic people. I guess it's the Catholic people that that their big thing is they don't read the Bible. You know, mm -hmm. they don't. You the God of Abraham, I guess, is not there. Not no, he is. It's the same Bible. Yeah, but they don't read they it. They just don't read it. Yeah, nobody knows what's in it. I was telling oh. all my friends are believers. I was telling one of them just yesterday. It's on Facebook. I think you can find it. Might have been yesterday. Um, she said something about something that God said, and I, I said, "Yeah." He also said, "Kill all the homosexuals." And she said, "What?" And I said, "Yeah, it's in that <laughs> stupid Bible." She said, I don't read that Bible. See, that's it. That, and <laughs> wow. and there are a lot of people are like where you used to be. Yeah, I call them methiists. Like they follow a God which they themselves have kind of made up, and they make him up right. Yeah. Absolutely. And he fits their morality perfectly because they fucking made him up. <laughs> yeah, I didn't know anything about the whole moral question either. Nope. Like, I didn't know that. But in my, in my own defense, I didn't ever think I got my morals from the Bible because I didn't really read the Bible. Yeah. So I Was their pastor giving them out or anything? I like, guess. I mean, like. I had my own morals. They're written on your heart. Oh, yeah. I heard you know, that. I, I was right, raised Southern Baptist, and you know, when they kicked me out of the uh, the the Bible school for all the kids for being a little a little prick, basically you know, asking all these questions, uh, I got put into the adults church, and pretty much we only had like one or two verses that they would, the pastor would read, and then he would pontificate on those for a while, and that's all we got every week. So yeah, we didn't really read the Bible either as a whole. Yeah. But, I I just never read it. I I you know, I just don't get it. But that's what we try to do. We try to open that up for people. And it's funny because a lot of our listeners are not the kind of folks that are going to conventions. And now now we've added um Dr. D. Yeah, we got a new evolution. He's segment. a evolutionary guy. <laughs> so I have to tell you my little theory of evolution um like god created everything and us and when i was um in elementary school my brother had to do a report on darwin and my mother went to the school 
and told them that he would not do that report. Really? And if they tried to make him do that report, she would make a big old stink. Yeah. <laughs> Just a report, like a, like a, a, like a bio. On a person. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And no way was he, was he doing that. So I knew I'm really not scientifically inclined. So I know nothing about science that I haven't learned in the past two years. And evolution was just a total mystery to me. So we put, we get Dr. D and he, I hate to say this about myself, but he talks to me like I'm a little kid. You know, he explains things on my level and I totally under, I'm like, I get that. We call that Susie speak. Yes. Mm. It's Susie speak. <laughs> And oh wait, let, let me just plug him. It's Dr. Daniel Russell. He's a PhD out of England. And he mm -hmm. graciously is just donating his time to sit and just chat with us about evolution. And we just talked. Awesome. He, him and his awesome accent. And, oh, like, <laughs> but I mean, he, fun. we talked he, about lily pads. He, yeah, he breaks it down. And he's, he's like, you know, got cool examples about, you know, say you have two ponds of frogs and this is how it can happen. And these are the pressures, but. He explains it in just a story version almost. It's been really great for her just to get that and that he, first introduction that he again, asks you just don't get. He makes sure that I get it. He yeah. said, you know, you're like he'll explain something. You know where they come from, right? And I'll go, Yeah, and he'll continue. He waits to because if I don't say anything, he goes, Okay, let me try it this way. Because <laughs> I'm I'm really slow on the uptake when it comes to science, let me tell you. But yeah, no, that's, that's really badass. We yeah, found there's so many people out there that are just in that same situation that Susie was in. And a lot of people are afraid to ask questions because they don't want to sound dumb. Sure. Well, they don't want to sound dumb. And, you know, if you're at care. an atheist skeptic <laughs> event, you know, and there's conversation, you don't want to derail somebody's whole conversation so they can With give the you silly a, little questions yeah. and give you a primer on what they're talking about. Yeah. I mean, that's that's awkward. So, you know. That's the niche we we saw, and we try to fill it, and we also try to have a lot of fun, and we make a hell of a lot of fun of Pat Robertson. Yeah, <laughs> just because because Pat Robertson is the universe's gift to podcasters. Mm -hmm. Oh God, <laughs> he has such an easy target. Him and him and him and Brian Fisher. Brian and, Fisher, yes, Brian Fisher's a big one. I, I've finally seen what he looks like now. I saw him on what was it YouTube? I think. Oh, yeah, that white haired prick. God, I can't stand him. He's an idiot. Yeah. <laughs> And that's a rug. <laughs> Tell me that's not a rug. <laughs> uh, yeah, fair, fair, fair to fair chance of that. Yeah. Yeah. Tell me. Yeah. Like, like Bill Shatner doesn't wear a rug. <gasps> oh, no, hey. it's all natural. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> well, Shatner can now. He's, he's the last of the big three. Yeah. So he can, he can wear whatever he wants now. We had a special episode. Um, I don't know how recently, if you've listened to any of our podcasts, but yeah. the last episode we did, I think, was the, was a tribute to Leonard Nimoy. The entire episode. Because Bill is a Star Trek junkie. We have done, yeah, we've done a lot of Trek episodes just cause I love Star Trek. Um, I like its humanistic vision of our future. Mm -hmm. Um, that Gene Brod Roddenberry really brought out. Um, I like, um, just, the idea that one day we might become that or something like that, where race, um, sexual orientation, these things are not gender. These things are not even things we think about. You know, we just look at people as people or other life forms. It's just other life forms. And then we go from there. I, I hope yeah. we can get there someday. Yeah. You know, I believe it was on Farpoint, uh, the first episode of uh, TNG, that there is a guy wearing a dress. In mm -hmm. one episode, but never again. And um, they did do... You know, it was a couple episodes in that first season. With, the, with guys wearing dresses? Yeah. Oh, With the miniskirts. Up, they did a straight up gay rights episode in yeah. Next Gen. Did they? Yeah, they yeah. Um, They went. They found a species that was genderless. Oh. And one of the... One of them felt like she was female. And of was course, attracted that to would Riker. make sense. And they... They weaved it in, and a lot of people don't see it, but it's funny because um, Callie White does the Gatheist podcast. Mm -hmm. Said to me, because we were, we were having a chat online one day, she said that episode meant a lot to her mm. because she's yeah. trans. And, you know, as a as a young person coming up, she got it. So so it reached the target audience, at least. And that actually wasn't the only one. Uh, later on, 
uh, Dr. Crusher fell in love with a trill uh, the first time they introduced the trill, and he died, and they transplanted the symbiote into a woman, and they they broached the, the topic again. I think I know, I think I remember that. And that was even that that was light years for the nineties. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, I mean, you, you got to look at these things, but and even if you look at the original stories, oh, oh, her and the Kirk, stuff they did for yeah, it, the sixties, yeah, <laughs> crazy top. Oh, the, the fact that there was an Uhura. Oh, yeah. Was huge. Um, you know, here, here we have a, in the sixties, we have a black woman who's an officer on the bridge of a starship. Yeah. Both of those. Have you ever heard Nichelle Nichols story on that? Yeah. <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> you know, she was going to, she was going to quit the show after the first season. She was going to leave the show. Yeah. You heard that one? Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah. But go ahead. Well, she was tell she was telling people that she was, she was getting ready to leave and Gene was trying to talk her out of it and she was at a party and they said someone wants to meet you he's a big big fan <laughs> and um she turned around it was Dr. Martin Luther King wow and he told her you cannot quit this show oh really wow that's cool yeah cuz she said they could never take that back right you know they see her up there they see a black woman in a position of authority whether she's just answering the phone or whatever but she's on the bridge and yep. they can't take that back. And she inspired a lot of young black girls. Among them, Whoopi Goldberg. Yep. Mm-hmm. So, I like the vision, so we do a lot of Star Trek. Awesome. My fiance I and I are actually working through the Star Trek series, well, series is, uh, by order of star date. Oh, so, nice. So, wow. So where are you? Well, we, okay, by order of star date with one exception. Voyager, <laughs> it really falls out of the timeline because of where it's at. Um, so yeah. we've made it through everything except for, um, well, we're, we're in the first season of Voyager and we have uh, Star Trek Nemesis. And then the nice. alternate universe is based on events created by stuff that happens past that. So we will then watch those uh, after Nemesis. Yeah. So, Bill, I'm kind of curious. What's your take on Enterprise? I liked Enterprise. Yeah. I did too. Completely lost it in the third season. It just went away. Really? I thought it picked up in the third. Yeah. And the fourth was great. With the Zindi? Yeah. Yeah. The third was the Zindi. I thought the Zindi was just, it was so way off track and they had to work so hard to pull that all back into canon. And then they, <laughs> like, real quick ended the time war. Yeah. That seemed rather sudden to me. See, but then the fourth speaking season. Speaking a different language now. The fourth <laughs> season, I thought, was phenomenal. Because the fourth uh, well, season, they started explaining a lot of crap from the original series mm -hmm, and linking mm -hmm. it together. The, why the Klingons look like humans? Um, See why my eyes, how did the Federation my eyes first blaze form? over when I hang out with him? <laughs> the the, the uh, Earth Romulan War. Yeah, and uh, right. you know what was disappointing was they got canceled at that point, so they had to cram all the rest of that into the fourth season. If they'd had a couple of more, uh, you know. Probably five or six would have been spent on on the the Earth Romulan War, and that would have been fascinating. They should well, they should have been doing those things one at a time. Like if they had been doing that in season three, I don't think their um, ratings would have dropped so bad. I really wish they would have been doing that in season two because I think that's a big reason why they got yeah. knocked off. Yeah, season, season two was utter shit. Season one was interesting, rough, but interesting. Second yeah. season just kind of got bad. pretty droll. See, now I'm going to have to like dig out Enterprise, Enterprise. and watch it cuz you guys are talking about it and I I know I liked like the one think, Vulcan ladies on that one, right? Mm -hmm. Paul. Yeah. yeah. Think about this, Susie. It's got Scott Bakula. Yeah, I, mean, I know. And that's, that's that's a big draw for me since And a Beagle. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, a Beagle. I was so happy that Scott got to see, sit in the captain's seat. He was like such an 80s icon of sci-fi to me with Quantum Leap. Oh yeah. Great show, Quantum Leap. I did love Quantum Leap. Yeah, that was a good show. And, and, and you know, I, I gotta be—I'll make a confession. I even loved the the final episode. I did. It was yeah. cheesy. It was corny with Riker being in there and everything. <laughs> and I loved every minute of it. I did. I'm a fan. What You're can I say? a geek. Yeah, but it, I mean, it was really corny. It was really cheesy. Yeah, <laughs> you loved Very. it. Very loved every minute of it. <laughs> And, and have you seen the the Star Trek uh, Kickstarter that's going on right now, or at least went no. on recently? 
No. They you can't a, shake your head. They can't hear you shake your head. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> they did a pilot for it, and it's like a 40-minute uh, series, mostly interviews of, of captains. And they've got the actor that plays uh, General Martok uh, as one of the captains. Uh, they have uh, Ambassador Saval from Enterprise in there, still alive. And it's the, the Federation uh, Klingon War. And they've got a few of the early NX uh, class ships that they're starting with, and they end with the commissioning of the Enterprise. Oh, that's cool. Oh. That is cool. Kirk's Enterprise. Yeah. And it, they built that because the Klingons just had them completely outpaced, and they were having horrible losses. And they built that, and they just destroyed the Klingons. Huh. Well, that'd be, that'd be Robert April's Enterprise, right, when they commission it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Hard cred. Have you guys, <laughs> you guys like, the animated series bill had me sitting and watching the animated series too it is so I've corny never and so awesome <laughs> <laughs> thank you <laughs> i was i was actually enjoying the animated series more than the original it's not a bad <laughs> show it's just animated and yeah. yeah there's a little cornball stuff and i was it's, like hey he sounds just like him you know it was like because it is him it's what they would have <laughs> done if if they had the the money to be able to do it for the original series. Well, it would have made sense because it would have appealed more to the kids. Well, and they had they had less network, you know, grabbing them mm-hmm. when they did the animated series. And that's why Next Gen is so much different than the original series because there was no network. It was there was no major network backing it. It went straight into syndication via Paramount. So that's why they were able to do so much more. And you, you could see it in Picard and his commentary on humanity that, that runs through those seven seasons. Um, and especially that one quote that we use on our podcast all the time about religion. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's the best. <laughs> yeah. You guys are all right. <laughs> well, thanks. You guys are we're all right, too. We're a little too. nerdy. And, and Susie is now a fan of Mystery Science Theater. Nice. I am now. It took the um, atheist um, conference to do that for me. But she wouldn't even watch it. She's like, "That's just stupid." I'm not watching some stupid show about robots talking through a movie. Yeah. And then I we saw God's Not Dead. Now she's a fan. She's like, "Oh, oh, you have this on DVD? Can we watch it?" <laughs> yeah. There's a there's a lot of stuff that that in my early early nerdiness months is for girls too of atheism. Is is a lot different than now. Like, you guys didn't hear the the behind the scenes, but like the first episode of our podcast, I think it was the first episode, maybe the second. I was all well. Bill and I argued a lot first of all because I I felt really stupid, and then he said "fuck" all the time, all the time. Fuck yeah. this and fuck that, and I said, "Babe, you say fuck entirely too much. You have to cut it down." I said, "I want you to edit some of those out." You know, I was like, "You're." You know, you're saying it too much. Made me go through and edit like 60% of them out. Oh, God. So, yeah. it took your show down by 20 minutes. Because yeah, I thought probably. it was offensive. It was like, it was messing with my, like, I don't know. So then he says, sweetheart, you, I know you don't listen to podcasts, but you got to listen to this podcast. Yeah, it was a new one that had just come out. And at, it, about, at the it, same time we were know, doing our first They couple. started theirs when we started ours, pretty much. And you have to listen to this podcast. <laughs> and he turned on Scathing Atheist. <laughs> and I went, okay, Bill, you're okay. You can say fuck as much as you want, because no matter what you do, you're never going to be as bad as those guys. I'm never going to be that offensive. You're never yeah. going to be that offensive, right? <laughs> and I've never made a single puppy rape joke. Yeah. Not one. Uh, to your detriment. I would say yeah. to your credit. Uh, there are some things that six, just are not Six funny. and one. Yeah. Okay, so on the MST3K note, you need to watch Santa Claus Conquers the Martians. Do we have that one? Oh, get it. You we have got to watch that one. It's so horrible. Zombie Nightmare, I think. I saw it because Bill gave me a few titles that I might want to see. And I'm, I looked at, I think Zombie Nightmare sounds kind of cool. Yeah, I, have, I have volume 15. No, oh, come on. Santa Claus Conquers the Martians. We'll right, order that. We'll have to get it then. <laughs> because this, like, it opened up this whole new world I don't even know about. I have a, a friend at work and I was telling him about it. And I said, do you know what? Mystery Science Theater 3000 is, and he looked at me like I was an idiot. <laughs> and he oh, totally good. knows what it is, and he's a total fan, and how could I not know what it was? <laughs> I, 
You know, I didn't grow up in, in the little geek world that you guys did. I just didn't do hey, it. Leave me out of this one. <laughs> it's I, I I I am not a fan of bad movies. I'm, I'm not, not either. That's that, that's either. why the commentary that they make over on top of that movie is what makes it great. It's a complete yeah. and utter waste of time in my mind. Because <laughs> I have watched watched to tell one, you, have there you was, I have one. Okay, so then you could say that I have See, watched several. Was, she said that without watching it. I'd never really watched one, but I didn't want to because it seemed stupid to me. The whole premise was just dumb. But I did w- try to watch God's Not Dead here at home a few weeks ago, yeah. and I couldn't get through the first 20 minutes because it was such a bad movie. So <laughs> when the Mystery Science Theater guys were there and they were going to do it, I managed to sit through the whole movie, and it was funny. Yeah. And they made, like, I've decided, I think I know, they must watch it ahead of time and oh, know yeah. exactly mm-hmm. when to say exactly what they're going to say. Because they had, like, there was this this scene where um Kevin Sorbo and the little Christian dude pass each other, like, switching places. One of them was going to the podium, one was going to sit down. And they say something to each other or they look back and forth but you couldn't tell because they dubbed over it and it was so much funnier like, asshole when they dubbed over dick it. <laughs> so <laughs> fun <laughs> and i was sitting there thinking well what did they really say and then i went oh i guess it doesn't matter anyway <laughs> you're like i don't give a shit <laughs> well i mean that, that's a movie it's like a, um you know a mass masturbatory look at white christians it was bad because if you, only good people in there really were white Christians, and the atheist yeah. was a really bad guy. All both of them. Yeah, Dean Cain's atheist was yeah. a total dickhead too. Yeah. And I would have thought it's he was Dean a Cain. dick. Yeah, like, but to, I mean, over the top dickish. Right? They they portrayed the atheist as over the top, stereotypical bad people. Even we don't even have stereotypes that fucking bad. I mean, these <laughs> were awful. Like, all right, Dean Cain's guy goes to meet his girlfriend for dinner, and he goes, "I got news. I became a partner." And she's upset. She's like, "Yeah, I have cancer," and he instantly breaks up with her. Yeah, I don't have time for that. I don't have time for that. <laughs> You're breaking our deal. Yeah, it was. I mean, really? Who the fuck does that? Oh, and, I could see Dean Cain doing that, but maybe. not an atheist. And then that none, the kid, none I know the student kid was was a oh, white argu- Jesus was yeah was <laughs> arguing with Kevin Sorbo the atheist, and he was like, "What happened to you? Why are you so angry?" And then, oh, well, I got this big old sob story, and this is why I'm pissed. And yeah, you know, well, something like no atheist would say, right. It's because my mom died. Yeah, yeah, his mom died, and he hates God because his mom died. So he's not really an atheist, right? Right? Oh yeah, we all hate God. Yeah, that, like that's Voldemort. why we don't believe in him. Yeah, like Voldemort. <laughs> and the Muslim oh. girl turns Christian. Yeah, as one yeah. does. Sure. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> ugh. <laughs> it's it's really really really. But no, the kid's name. I, his name's literally like fucking White Jesus. <laughs> It's Joshua Wheaton. Yeah. Wow. I mean, <laughs> what is the phrase? White is right. Yeah. Man, it's <laughs> and the one black guy is comic relief. The one Christian black guy. Right. And they had the token Chinese guy. Yeah. Uh-huh. Who didn't know about Jesus? Never heard of him. Who? Yeah. What? And turned into a Christian. And yeah, yeah. The Muslim guy. He was so evil because he was forcing his daughter into Islam. And then he kicked her out of the house. Yeah. Like Christians don't kick the kids out of the house for, for converting to something Christian. else, right? Oh, yeah, for to, the, um, by converting to another type of Christian, getting kicked out. Yeah. Let alone Islam. Yeah. Let mm-hmm. alone if it was reversed. And we had an interesting thing happen at, at the American Atheist Convention this weekend. I thought it was kind of cool. Bill and I were leaving to go to lunch or something, and we saw this kid, like, looks like a surfer kid, and yeah. he's tall and long like kind of long blonde hair and he looks really lost and he looks at bill and he goes um do 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 you know where i can sign up for the atheist convention and he's really 
he's nervous, like nervous, and he's like jittery and he's shaky and he's he's so excited. And so we we walked him up upstairs where he could sign up, and then. He's he wanted, a huge fan of Jackie Glenn. Yeah, he wanted to meet Jackie Glenn. <laughs> so we took him over to so meet her. So she was standing right there, you know? But it turns out, check this out. The kid is 17 years old. He's the only atheist he knows. Shit. And he had to sneak out of his house. Yeah, he kind of sn- He told him he was going somewhere else. Yeah. Um, Lied about where he was going to his family and stuff because he wanted to meet somebody else. Yeah. Anybody who, you know what I mean? And... You know, we we hooked him up with her, and they they hooked him up with and Dave they Silverman. Him up with, with Dave Silverman, <laughs> um, it, was, it was just amazing how many lost people there are out there that don't feel like they can even be themselves or just say, "I I don't quite believe that." Yeah, and, it, and this poor kid, man. I mean, and I and I have to think you're right. It, it kind of parallels that damn movie. Yeah, because I have to think at his house kind of has that same dynamic. Maybe not to that extreme. Right. But he was certainly nervous. Right. And he was certainly well closeted. Yeah, he was, he was like, it was, it was just neat. He just snuck out to go to the convention for one day. Actually, only an afternoon. Yeah. He said he couldn't make it any other time. Yep. Mm. Just, just to meet some people, shake some hands and and listen to a few talks. I'm so, I'm so thrilled about the amount of, um, young atheists there are now. It, it, you know, cause, it seems like the younger crowd is getting it. Our son, he's 24. Absolute out loud atheist. <laughs> he's a, <laughs> he's a little bit on the out loud side. So yeah. Um, our daughter is 21. She's not quite an atheist. No, which yeah. is weird. It is weird. <laughs> well, she's a Let lesbian. Find their own path. She's a lesbian and she was brought up in a non like a non-practicing home. She knows absolutely mm-hmm. nothing about the Bible, mm-hmm. but she's like, I don't know, convinced there's a God or whether you know, she doesn't. Oh. Well, we definitely let them find their own path to I mean, yeah. spiritual, but not religious. Sound familiar? Right. Yeah. Kinda. We just think it's weird. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know, yeah. It's just, it's, it's strange. Cause when she, you know, if the topic comes up, we just go, wow, that's weird. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah. Can you bring me another beer from the fridge? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, oh yeah, well that that is a rule in our house. Theists have to get my beers out of the fridge. Theists have the beer. Fed. Don't you? Don't you guys just have the sensuous rule? No, no. Sensuous I, up. Get me a beer. No, it, it's it works much better in my house. It's somebody else <laughs> is gonna get my beer. That's right. <laughs> yeah. It's, and, and you know, if you if you believe in God, it's definitely you. Because it's like, hey. Your imaginary friend hasn't miracled my ass a beer yet. <laughs> Guess you got to step in. Nice. No, I don't do that. I should, though. That'd be funny. We're going to train the dog, too, though. Ooh. We want to train our dog to fetch beer. I figure I got about three years on the granddaughter. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. It's neat when they can start getting your beer. Because she's three weeks now. So, <laughs> so yeah, in three years, she can get she can and spill beer. your beer. Well, and- all you... In oh, three years, you'll be telling her, "Get me a Coors or get me a something that it no, tastes no, no. better." No, you have to show them the label. You know, yeah. give me one of these. Yeah, they could do it yeah. at eight months, but only cans. You don't have them carry glass <laughs> at that age. Mm-hmm. Yeah, as long as they can walk, toddle, open the fridge, you could show them the label. And I know this from experience because I had four kids. Uh, you show them the label, <laughs> and they'll bring it. But please, anybody listening, don't have them get bottles for you <laughs> until they're at least two and a half. Maybe yeah. three. <laughs> yeah. But cans, uh, whatever. If they drop the can, put it back. Give me another one. That's okay. <laughs> but, you know, oh, glass. Wow. <laughs> because the problem is the glass breaks, they could get cut. And if this is not the first beer they brought you, you might not be able to, to take them to the emergency room. <laughs> <laughs> plan these things well. And it would also take longer to get your replacement. Yeah, because they'd have to sit there and bleed till I sober it up. Exactly. Yeah. You know, and that interferes with my drinking and not but, happen. But on the plus side, there's good barbecue for tonight when they bleed <laughs> out. I'm just saying. I just came from Memphis. I, I, I see a lot barbecue. of ribs. Mm. A lot of good barbecue there. Oh, yeah. Baby back ribs. Mm. Yep. Like Little it. tiny ribs. <laughs> Riblets. Mm. 
<laughs> all right. On that note, uh, we are running out of time. You guys are all right. This has been fun. Yeah. I'm, I'm so, glad that we hooked up. Yeah, I'm sorry. It's so last minute. I had somebody drop out and reschedule. Oh, so we were what? Second choice? A third. Oh. <laughs> no, I'm totally fucking with you. <laughs> No, uh, seriously, I've wanted to talk to you guys for a while. Let's see, this is episode 89, so... Yeah, we've had a while. We're 89th choice. So we're 89th choice. <laughs> wow, thanks, guys. That's all right. We're not, exactly, we're not exactly movers and shakers in the front of the community. We work behind the scenes, behind the bar. Yeah. Yeah. We're, we're, we're the, I guess you could say that. That's where you find us. And sometimes it's a pretty good place to be. Passed out. <laughs> In the booth, Passed down up. from the bar because we've been there too long. Yeah, but yeah, we're not. We we don't speak. Well, actually, I, I want to say we don't speak at conventions except. Yeah. Um, I told you guys earlier. Plug, plug, plug. We um, first PA atheist convention where we got the idea for the show. Yeah. This September, the fourth annual PA atheist humanist conference. We'll open with Barroom Atheist on the stage. Oh shit. Nice. You're gonna record a li- record a live episode? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. With in front of a a studio audience and all that other stuff. And yeah. I'm trying to figure out how how they do the laugh track thing. Because <laughs> we're just not gonna uh, We might fucking need that. We suck. Well just just plug your phone in and you know you you can you can get that set up. Oh nice. Because, you know, yeah. I figure we're going on at seven. I got to start drinking at four. That's true. <laughs> to get truly ready for that. I'm thinking two or three. No, 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 no. Because I, I want to be speaking with still consonants in my voice. You know, <laughs> yeah. a- after a while, it goes to all vowels. Yeah, we have an episode where we're so drunk. That where we I went to vowels. Speak. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> See, there's no consonants left. And just, just so you know, in the future, forever. We're all hanging out. Do not let Bill think of drinking games. No, no drinking games and no tequila. <laughs> Absolutely not. I'm on I'm on tequila probation and drinking games probation. Definitely on drinking games probation. Because he made a drinking game out of the Bible and he got four people absolutely trashed. <laughs> but if it if it's my birthday, then we'll just have to do it because you know I want to, right? That's true. Yeah, Birthdays right. are yeah. That would that you could you because Susie's really big into birthday powers, so birthday. you could actually override rules with that. Right? Yeah, birthdays are special. Yeah, Sweet. but I don't really like it. I'm not doing. I'm not. I'm definitely gonna think twice before I do another Bible drinking game now. Yeah, because that didn't turn out well for me. Well, I slept on the bathroom floor. What was? We had, we were reading. I'm 40 years old. That doesn't happen to what me. What book anymore. were we reading, Bill? Uh, Kings? Kings. Yeah, I think so. And Bill said every time they say. In the annals of. In the annals of. And there were four phrases. And he said every time <laughs> that this is said, you have to do not a drink, not a swallow of a beer, but, but we a were shot. doing shots of rum chata mixed with two different kinds of vodka. It was delicious though. Hmm. It was, it was, it started out, it was fun, but, uh, we, I, I don't really don't remember the end. I'll tell you how, I'll tell you how bad it was though. <laughs> Do you know how, like, if you've ever been out and just really overdone, you've had too much and you can't smell anything you ate that night for a while, or you certainly can't smell that alcohol, but like if you had, I don't know, something for dinner, you can't even look at that anymore for like a couple of weeks. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. Yeah. I couldn't listen to the audio. <laughs> yeah, it was bad. Without getting nauseous. Mm. So it was nice. so the episode went out. Yeah, because he had to edit. and he, Oh, I had to edit. He <laughs> didn't do it without getting sick. It was so funny. So how far through the Bible are you guys? Proverbs. Okay. Yeah, we're, I think we're, are we done with Proverbs now? Or no. We got like, like 10 chapters, 10 of, Proverbs chapters of Proverbs left. We're in the couplets part. Now, What's funny is, and I keep mentioning, we were for a while competing with Scathing Atheists. We were like on the same book as they were, and then we were beating them, and then we were right behind them, and now we've just been blown away. Well, because we're kind of in the middle. Well, first of all, we don't do nearly as many episodes as they do, but they just kind of read a book and talk about it. Yeah. Bobby C. and Ashley actually read the damn thing. Yeah, word for word. Word for word. We're kind of in the middle. Uh, we'll go through chapter by chapter and pick out 
selected passages that we think are either really screwed up or, hey, that makes sense. We do give it props where it's right, you know, because there are a couple of good words of wisdom in there. Yeah, there were Especially some proverbs. Especially in Proverbs, yeah. yeah that, were, that were pretty good. So we're like, okay, we agree with that, you know. Be kind to puppies or whatever it says. I don't <laughs> Whatever you know. it says. So, <laughs> so we're, we're a little more in-depth, but not we don't read the thing word for word. You're, you're almost to the only decent book in the Bible. Which is the only decent book in the Bible? Ecclesiastes. Why? We'll find out. Don't No spoilers. <laughs> no spoilers. There's I'll, good things in Songs of Solomon, too. Well... Then let's get well, there, re- There's fun cause... things in Songs of Solomon. <laughs> I, I think it's it's kind of creepy the way <laughs> the, the, yeah. the the analogies that are used, the metaphor is disturbing. Okay, I'm gonna say. No wonder these people have so many sex hangups. <laughs> With analogies like that. Yeah. I can well see that. stop. I don't don't spoil it. Oh that yeah, you know, Song of Solomon we can't really spoil. That's one you have to experience for yourself. It, it's kind of funny that I'm talking about the Bible going, Don't spoil it. <laughs> <laughs> we haven't even gotten to the sequel. True book of fiction now. Hey I'm Bill sorry. and Susie. Yeah, so guys, uh pimp your stuff. What where can people find you? All that good stuff. Well, the show's at barroom dot dot com. Um, you can get us off iTunes. Any decent podcatcher will find us. Actually, if you just go into the Google machine and type bar room atheist, three words, we're, we're the first thing that comes up. Hopefully our Facebook page will pop up, which is bar room atheist Facebook page. Yeah, we're pretty active on, on there too. We, we post a lot to the Facebook page. The show Twitter is at bar room atheist. Real easy. Uh, I'm at shaper, S H A P E R 079. And I'm at Sberry, S-B-I-R-R-Y. Yeah, so if you want to follow us personally, we welcome that too. I do a lot of debating on Twitter. He's fun to watch. Um, so if you just want to know about the show, just follow the show one. And um, yeah, check the show notes. Got our emails and all that other cool stuff. Sweet, guys. Awesome. Thank you very much for joining us. This has been a good time. Thank you so much it's for having blast. us. It was awesome. Thank you for listening to another episode of Atheist Nomads. You can find us online at www.atheistnomads.com. Contact us at contact at atheistnomads.com or leave us a voicemail message at 541-203-0666. You can also like us on Facebook or leave us a review on iTunes, Zoom, or wherever else you find the podcast. Until next time, this has been the Atheist Nomads. You guys there? You there? Hello? Hey. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that was shitty. My uh, computer went to sleep. Oh. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Kick that mouse around sometime. Yeah. I was just about to, and it was a second too late. And then it got really quiet. <laughs> yeah. We. we, we it went weird. Yeah, sorry about that. My uh, computer went to sleep. <laughs> oh, is that what it was? Because all of a sudden I'm like, I saw it happen, and I'm like, ooh, that doesn't look right. It is funny, because we were... <laughs> I, you know how when you're amused. sitting and talking to people you don't know that much, and shit just gets weird? Yeah. 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 I like that. Yeah, like that, that was it. That was, yeah. that was the moment it got it's weird. like that. Damn it. Well, at least we still have your side of the audio. Yeah. 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 We can we're hear that later. Sex. <laughs>